Hey guys, welcome back. So in this episode, I wanna talk a little bit about Arcade 1UP. When those cabinets hit the scene, I was so excited. And I knew about them even before they went public. And I was like, wow, it's a sleek cabinet. It's sexy, it's lightweight. And then, you know, as I started using them a little bit, and I love them, by the way, I was like, maybe there's some alternatives. And my eyes started to wander a bit. You know, that made me feel a little uncomfortable because I was like, man, I'm kind of cheating on Arcade 1UP. But then I saw these cabinets and they were a little bit more beefy and like had a little bit more curve to it. Really, really kind of sexy. And so my eyes started to wander and I just couldn't help myself. Um, excuse me, babe? No, the cabinets, Your the cabinets. I'm talking about the cabinets. What are you talking about? Stay tuned. It also hell? plays Sega Genesis cards. All right, guys, let's do this thing. Time to unbox. All right, be careful when you're doing this because there are several pieces that actually are not cardboard, believe it or not, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Everything was packaged really nice, so great job, guys. All right, we got to put these um, screws into every single part of this board as step one. Um, this is just like IKEA furniture. goes together the same exact way with those cam locks. Um, Right now, you'll see me putting on the hinges. That's for the door. That is a really cool feature of this, and we'll talk more about that as uh, time goes on. All right, time to mount the speakers and amplifier. So I actually did mess this step up, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, it didn't come with screws. I actually had some screws for this, but uh, I screwed the amp down backwards, so you're going to want to screw it in the other way if you're following along. So make sure you screw it the other way otherwise you can't adjust the volume from the back and there's a close-up view all right so got to hook up the speaker wires real quick simple and easy just make sure positive is positive and negative is negative is negative and you should be good to go all right we're going to start at the top of the cabinet um i actually followed along with the uh, video that ryan over at game room solutions provides so every now and then you'll see me glancing at my phone just to make sure i'm doing things correctly um i actually this board was giving me a little bit of a hard time, so you see me struggling with that. Uh, so that's the top of the marquee that we're attaching right now. And you'll see uh, those pieces of, of what look like cardboard are actually the plexiglass for the uh, marquee, which is what I almost misplaced, and I actually contacted Ryan over at Game Room, and he showed, showed me where it was. All right, so this is a quick look at the marquee because I forgot to record this part. You'll see inside... <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see inside that I put some LED strips. Just mount those a little bit further away from the marquee glass and plexiglass and you should be fine. You won't see any of the lights shine through and actually it really does look quite awesome and you'll see that later on. So um, I'm really happy with how it's coming along so far. Okay, now it's time for the monitor mount. So the monitor gave me a little bit of a hard time. I chose a ViewSonic 22-inch monitor. Um, basically, this board that goes behind the monitor allows you to slide the monitor up and down, and you're going to need to do that to get it properly centered for the plexiglass that, um, that they provide in this kit. Uh, what I'm assembling now is actually where the control board will sit, and there's that nice slit right there that you can see, and that's for your wires. So it's really, really well equipped for... Um, being able to work on the cabinet easily, which I really appreciated. So here's the marquee, or sorry, not the marquee, but the LCD plexiglass. That's going to go right in there. That was a little bit hard to get into that groove, so you're going to have to put a little bit of pressure, but not too much. Then I'm going to spin this system around, and you're going to see um, me attempt to get this monitor correctly uh, aligned. Uh, this is actually quite tricky because you have to align it, and then you have to go on the other side and just make sure that... Um, you know, the screen doesn't show in certain areas. I want the, the whole screen. I don't want to show the border of the screen. Um, so this was actually quite tricky, and I actually could not get it right. I tried a bunch of different times, and I wanted it to be perfect, um, and I just couldn't get it the way I wanted it. So um, I fiddled with it a little bit more, but the problem I found is that these grooves um, and the outer grooves are where my monitor would connect. They're just not long enough. So I'm going to modify this, I think, just to get... Um, get it the way I want because I'm a little bit anal. So let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, so the reason why we're outside is because I had a problem with the monitor mount, which is really kind of a bummer. So you move the monitor up and down on this mount to, um, to actually get it to fit in the bezel. And the problem is, is you know, obviously every monitor is slightly different. Um, the mounting 
holes are usually about the same. Um, I think Visa is the standard. I think that's still the case. It's been a while since I've looked at that. But um, yeah, it's a bummer, man. So it, it either is too high or too low. And I don't know if you guys saw that from the video. So I'm going to have to extend these holes so that I can move the monitor up and down to get the right fit. Wow. That is a really, really bad hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i suck with a jigsaw uh but anyways it's gonna get the job done it's fine it's not pretty but it's fine here i'll show you guys real quick wow that is bad look at that look at that big gaping hole that'll definitely that'll definitely work <laughs> hey you know what i'm not perfect at this stuff i don't claim to be so anyways let's head back inside Okay, so with our mount extended, I should be able to get this perfectly aligned. Um, so I'm fiddling with it a little bit more. It did take a while, but I finally got it to a point where I thought it looked really good. So, um, uh, but that, however, there was one other th trick to it that I found is um, if you look, you can't really see it in the video, but there's actually a couple different options of how close you want to mount the monitor to the actual bezel. I chose to change it because um, I was a little bit further away and I thought maybe I could get it closer and it would look awesome. So you'll see me change that in a second. But before I do that, I just want to clean this screen up really good because um, I don't want any dust or anything behind it. Uh, just so that it gets the best picture as, that I possibly can. So right now I'm changing those cams so that I can get it a tiny bit closer and now it's super, super snug up to the top. So I'm really happy with the way that came out. All right, so now it's time to do the kick plate, super easy installation. You just uh, you know put that down and then you lock those cams in place, which you'll see me do right now. So, um, so far so good guys. I'm feeling like the cabinet is an awesome quality. Um, the wood is really thick and great. Um, now we'll get to the back, the back door. So. Again, I love this feature because you'd be surprised, uh, you know, I actually don't keep my back door on my arcade one up because um, I want to get in there and fiddle with it from time to time. So this is a super nice feature and props to Ryan for doing this. I love it over at Game Room Solutions. All right, let's uh, let's get the top panel down. This was actually kind of tricky and uh, it, it the video was a lot longer, but I cut it down. You have to really fiddle with those boards to get it in and then the other side of the plexi uh for the bezel has to really you have to really be careful as you get it into that groove but uh there's a closer look inside so you can see what's going on uh this part sucked because i had to get on my back and i kind of have a bad back um so yeah so if you have a bad back just know you're going to be in some tight spaces and you're going to want to get a knobby screwdriver that's really short because there's some weird angles that you have to try to get into uh in order to screw those cam locks down so uh yeah not the most fun part of it but um but i just wanted to ensure i got them all so it's a nice tight fit now here's a some feedback on the door it appears that the door comes out a little further than I would have liked. And I don't know, I haven't contacted Ryan at Game Room Solutions, but I am going to give him a chance to respond on this. There was also some damage on the wood of the door. I don't know if you just saw that as we back up. See, there's some damage there. So some damage on the door, and I don't feel like the door is flush, but I'm not sure if the door is supposed to be flush or not. So in their defense, I was looking at, could I possibly move... Um, that back a little bit but i didn't want to drill new holes but these are the holes provided uh, that are pre-drilled from the factory so i used those holes so i decided to leave it alone for now but i am going to give ryan a chance to respond on that all right so now we're on to the control panel another sweet 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 thing about this system is that it's got latches for the control panel just like a real arcade cabinet would have so you can gain access uh, to the control panel makes it 10 times easier to work with guys this is actually a killer killer piece of this cabinet i'm so so stoked on this um but however i made a big giant mistake and uh i had mounted all the buttons on here not knowing that uh there was a piece of plexiglass that goes over this thing so um that's an awesome thing too but uh had i known i wouldn't have put all the buttons and joysticks in uh prior so i'm actually having to take all of the joysticks out or not the joysticks out sorry but all the buttons off uh, just so I can put this piece of plexi on. So you'll see that's the plexi. It did look like a piece of cardboard. I almost threw it out. That would have been a huge giant mistake. So um, what I'm going to do though is after this paper comes off, I'm going to clean this thing off because uh, the pr paper kind of leaves a little bit of a residue. And uh, if, if I want to make it stay nice, I want to make sure it's clean the first time I put it on. All right, so I'm wiping that down, getting that nice and clean. I'm not going to let you sit through or have you sit through all of the buttons going back on, but that's what I'm doing now is putting the buttons all back onto the control panel, and then we'll put it, uh, finally mount it. 
So we'll get it secured and locked down. Again, awesome, awesome feature of this cabinet and uh, it makes it really great if you have to go in there and do any service later on. I'm probably gonna talk about this again uh, just because I love it so much. All right, time for wiring. So I chose to do a JAMA for this installation. So it is running a JAMA harness and it is by that company, Press Your Buttons. So it is fully labeled in English and super easy to follow. I'm going to mention this latch system again for a moment because, you know, if you're modding an arcade one up and you've got to do the wiring, this, this makes it so much more convenient than that. Um, I'm not, not bashing the arcade one up by any stretch of the imagination, but, uh, but in this, in this case, when you're doing wiring like this, it's just kind of nice to be able to do it quick and easy. And then if you have to make a correction, you just open the latch versus if you had to go back in and you've already screwed down the, the control panel on arcade one up, you got to keep opening it up and unscrewing it. So it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but, um, but I, I really liked this feature. So, um, of course, course, this is like the third time I mentioned it. So in a minute, I'm going to um, go ahead and start to organize, organize these wires a little bit. That is the one thing when you're working with a JAMA harness, uh, it does take a little bit to get the wiring great. And admittedly, I'm still not that great at doing it, but um, but I, this is, I thought this looked pretty good. I was actually, it was one of those moments where I stood back and went, damn, that actually looks pretty good. So uh, I don't always uh, boast about my wiring skills, but I thought this looked pretty good for for uh, for retro Ralph, who's not known for being the best at wiring, um, I, sometimes I'm not that clean when it comes to this stuff. So I thought it looked pretty good. So there's a closer look, and I didn't use those four buttons on the bottom, those yellow ones. I'm gonna reserve those for future mods. All right, so let's spin this guy around. Keep in mind, this is a lot heavier than an arcade one up. This is a lot thicker wood. Um, it's a lot more sturdy in a sense, so uh, it, it does take a little bit to turn it around. All right, here is the mystery board. I am not going to talk about this till we get to the end of the review, but I'm super stoked for what this system has in it, and I'll just leave it at that. I kind of gave a hint in the beginning of the video, but uh, you will have to stick around to find out what that thing is. All right, so I haven't done this before in a video, but I thought this would be great for this particular mod. So what I'm doing right now is I'm uh, making a switched power supply um, so that what I can do is switch on the whole entire unit from the back. So what you need to do is you have to take a power strip, cut the end of it, uh, and put some quick connects on it. And then you need to also go out and buy the switch itself, uh, which the great thing is, is the game room solution system already has a pre-cut hole for the actual switch. So all you have to do is be able to do this and then you can you know, utilize that hole. So now we're gonna wire this thing up. I am gonna provide a diagram uh, along with this so that you guys can understand how to do this. You know, whenever you're messing with electricity, you really wanna be sure you know what you're doing. Um, you do not wanna get electrocuted and you do not want it to be unsafe. So that's a close view of the wiring. You will notice this is a square receptacle. And when I push it in there, this is supposed to actually just fit snug. And there's supposed to be these wings that kind of separate as you as you put it in through the hole. I did notice that uh, you'll see in a moment here, I did notice it seemed a little loose. So when I pushed it in, I did not like the way it fit. So um, I actually chose to do the one with the wings. So you see all of a sudden the magic of video, it's actually a different switch. Uh, but that's the one I liked. It fit a lot better and then you could screw it down. And when it's electricity, you don't want to mess with that kind of stuff. So I made sure it was nice and snug. All right, so at this point, I am going to complete the rest of the wires, clean this up a little bit, uh, get the arcade power supply figured out, and then I think I'm going to try to see if uh, Classic Kim, used to be Retro Kim, Classic Kim, her new name, will want to help me out with a little bit of re review and gameplay. So I'm going to finish this up, and we're going to go right over to the beginning of the system and fire this thing up. All right, guys, before I bring in Classic Kim, I wanna do a couple of initial reactions. I wrote them down because I don't wanna miss anything. So for one, this is a real arcade cabinet. It's a lot heavier than an arcade one-up. It's a lot sturdier than an arcade one-up. Um, it accommodates a 22-inch monitor, so, you know, 17 versus 22, it just depends on what you're really looking for, but you have to source that yourself. Um, the cam lock system works really good, just like IKEA furniture, goes together fairly simple. The control panel has hinges for easy access, which I did cover during the video. That makes it a lot easier when you wanna work on the cabinet. So it's something that I personally really like. Um, so if you're looking for something that you can change and modify really quickly without having to unscrew things, that's a pretty nice feature. Um, they did a great job on the artwork. I happened to pick artwork that they created um, and they have a bunch of user submitted things and then you can also submit your artwork and then when it leaves their factory, it will have your artwork on it. That saved me a ton of time because honestly, I hate doing the wrap myself. I'm, I'm not that good at it. 
Um, but even with a good product, I just don't do it very well. Um, they provided the plexiglass for both the marquee and the bezel. I think that's a really cool feature. Um, and then it's pre-slotted for T-molding. The whole system is pre-slotted for T-molding. You do have to get the T-molding and do that yourself. So if you're not as familiar with T-molding, you know, that's something you just have to be aware of. Um, and there's a few YouTube videos that show you how to do that. I want to give a special thanks to JC on the Arcade 1UP modding group. So uh, he runs a Facebook modding group. Uh, I'm gonna have links in the description to that. That community has been great. They've really, um, you know, they've really accepted my channel and they've done a lot to support me personally. So I really do appreciate them and I appreciate that. And props to JC for setting that up. Um, and I'll leave links in the description, like I said. Um, you do have to provide the LED lights for the marquee, but it does have the plexi, as I mentioned. And uh, there were a couple of boards that showed up damaged, uh, as you saw in the video, and Ryan from Game Room Solutions has offered to replace those free of charge. So, um, and I did also ask him about the rear door. He said the rear door shouldn't close the way it's closing right now, and he, showed, he already gave me a fix for that too. So, you know, it's important to me when you're buying a product like this that the company's gonna stand behind it, and Ryan seems like he's definitely gonna stand behind his product, so props to that. So, quick side by side. I like them both. They're both really great. There's pros and cons to both. I'm not really saying it's one or the other. I almost think this is a little bit of a level up, <laughs> no pun intended, because that's what it's called. It's more of a level up from an arcade one-up. You're getting a little bit more sturdy cabinet. You're getting a cabinet that's a little bit more versatile. So it just really depends on what you want. Again, love them both. So that's my quick summary. I'm gonna bring Classic Kim in here and uh, she'll play some Fix It Felix Jr. for you. Kim here, she's ready to play. Hey guys. Although I'm still upset with your wandering eyes comment. All right, let's do it. You moved my stump. I can fix it. Okay. Oops. I already suck at this game. <gasps> oh. I'm trying. Ah. Oh, oh, I jumped right in his way. Okay, should I set, show him what else this thing does? Sure. But how was this? Is this fun? Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. All right, so now that uh, Classic Kim has done horsing around, I can show you a little overview of the cabinet. So you can't really tell, but it's got a killer lit marquee. As you saw, it's running Fix It Felix Jr. And the control board is pretty damn cool. So I gotta give them props for an awesome design on the control board. Um, but my favorite thing about it, as I stated before, is the fact that you can lift it up to service it. Awesome, awesome feature. As we move down, you got this cool plate underneath the control panel and you have the kick plate. The kick plate is actually already um, got a hole for the coin door, which I will be doing at a later time, and I'll do another video for that. Uh, the speakers are mounted right there. The side artwork is really nice, as you can see. But what was I talking about earlier? So what is Fix It Felix actually running on? Let's open that up and check it out. So. This, my friends, is a Sega Genesis, an actual original equipment Sega Genesis. And this is the Fix-It Felix cart right here. So here's the cool thing. Since this is a Sega Genesis, I can run any Sega Genesis cartridge I want in this machine. So if we wanted to run a multi-cart with hundreds of Genesis games, we could. If you wanted to play the original Streets of Rage, we could do that. So I'm gonna pop this in real quick. All you have to do is power the cabinet off. We're gonna replace the cartridge with Streets of Rage. I'm gonna power the cabinet back on.
pretty cool stuff. So I'll show you what the multi-cart is really quick and then we'll wrap this video up. I'm putting in the multi-cart. And what you have with the multi-cart is uh, tons and tons of Genesis games for you to play. So if I wanted say Comic Zone. Test one, two. Sorry about the glare from the lights, guys. And then I actually configured this exit button to take you back to the main screen. So if I wanted to play Aladdin, So, you know, obviously you've got many, many, many titles to pick from. So I was pretty excited about this. This is actually one of the coolest features. I think this is gonna quickly become one of my favorite cabinets to play on. So if you guys like this video, please like it, please subscribe to the channel. Please hit that notification bell so you can be informed of future videos. And as always guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.